Hello, people of tomorrow. Welcome to Medical Education Exclusive Talk. Me. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Nino, a member of AMSA Jember Indonesia. I'm currently a first year student in Jember University. Here, I will be the moderator of the second episode of me. So, what is me? Well, first of all, meat is definitely not something that you grill and eat with barbecue sauce and tomato ketchup, no. Meat, as I said before, is the abbreviation for Medical Education Exclusive Talks, where we talk about the world of medical education and medicine exclusively also with exclusive people, such as our one-of-a-kind, fresh from England guest, so without further ado, let me briefly introduce our guest. Jeyong Park graduated from International School of Kuala Lumpur with several academic excellences, then continued his study until now in Imperial College London in his second year of MBBS or Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. He also has many work experiences the latest being a project lead in iPharmaCare, which is a visionary project to revamp healthcare in Malaysia through establishing an e-prescription system in 2020. He is currently an AMSEP officer of AMSA England. Hello, Jayong. How was your day? Hi. I was, was alright, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, even though I briefly introduced us earlier, I believe that everyone would love to know you better. So, would you please uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So, um, my name is Jay Yong. Um, I'm from South Korea, but um, I was born and raised in Malaysia. Um, and before coming to London, I lived there all my life. Um, I'm currently uh, 19. Uh, and yeah, I'm in my second year of medical school at um, Imperial College London. So yeah. Charming, isn't it? <laughs> so now that we know each other, it's time to go deeper. Which brings us to our first topic. So first off, before we get into our discussions about our differences in medical education system, culture, and all the serious stuff, I'd like to get to know you better through history, not a national history, but your history regarding your path to become a medical student. So for now, would you like to tell us more about what you're currently studying, like um, MBBS and the programs you're taking perhaps? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, I'm part of the uh, six year uh, <coughs> medicine course at Imperial. Um, typically, uh, medical school in the UK is five years, but um, for schools like Imperial, we have uh, an additional year where we uh, do a intercalated uh, BSc. Um, so yeah, my course is six years. Um, it's kind of divided into three parts. So um, the first uh, three years are kind of like the preclinical years, I'd, get, I'd say, especially the first and second years. So that's where we kind of learn about the like systems and like the biochemical stuff as well. Um, third year is mostly, I guess, in placement. So we go to firms most of the time for that year. And, and then for our fourth year, um, we do our intercalated BSc, where we can choose um, sort of like uh, majors like um, card, uh, cardio or um, neuroscience, or even things that aren't really related to medicine, like management or uh, biomedical engineering. Um, and then for our fifth and sixth years, um, basically just going into hospitals, uh, yeah, for our clinical years. So yeah. Wow, that's so cool because um, in Indonesia, it's like uh, we have about three years of uh, preclinical years, and then. And then it's like we go through a different phase and different phase. Well, in there, it's like uh, 
It's like one system consists of six mm. years. That consists of everything. That's just so cool to me. <laughs> so oh, right. yeah. So let's get to our next topic, which is uh, ways to get into a university. So uh, in Indonesia, there are several ways to get into a university, medical or not. So first is through our high school scores. So just purely our high school scores, and then uh, through a national selection test. So in Indonesia, there's this national selection test that is uh, being participated by uh, students from all over Indonesia, and then they they get to apply to their favorite university and etc. And then the national committee will take care of the rest and. Some get accepted and some don't. And lastly, through ways that differ between universities, so uh, which usually involves a lot sum of money. But yeah, so which for our university, we combine our national selection test score, so the test that I mentioned earlier, with a different test that uh, my university provided. Personally, I got in through my high school scores, which is luckily good enough. Uh, how about you? How did you get into your very honorable university, Imperial College London? Uh, okay, yeah, so um, I'll talk about how I got into the med- medicine course for Imperial. So um, similarly to your university as well, we have our high school scores. So, um, uh, so for the UK, they mainly accept uh, IB scores or A-level scores. Um, my school, we did IB, so um, the teachers gave out predicted grades based off of um, our like school grades um, to the university. So, firstly, our predicted grades had to be high. So I think I got 43 out of 45 um, as my predicted. Um, <laughs> and and then um, other than that, we also have to write a personal statement. Um, and this is just for all UK universities as well. You have to submit a personal statement as to why you want to apply for this course, uh, why you want to go to that university, etc. cetera. Um, along with that, with medicine as well, we have to take um, external uh, assessments. So there are actually two um, external assessments when it comes to UK universities. Some, uh, so this the BMAT and the U- UCAT. Um, some unis take the UCAT, but for Imperial, um, they wanted the BMAT, which is essentially a uh, test which includes like um, sort of like cognitive skills, um, as well as math, bio, uh, physics, chemistry, and like this essay portion as well. Um, so we have to submit that as well. And um, so with those three things, the uh, predicted scores, the uh, the external assessments, as well as the um, personal statement, uh, you'll then, um, the unis will look and see which candidates they like. And um, if, let's say, they like you, you'll be selected for an interview process, for an interview. So then I had to fly to London during uh, school for my interview. And then after I took that, um, thankfully they, they liked me and uh, I got in to that. But yeah, obviously you have to also meet the condition. So because you're submitting predicted grades, right? Um, they'll give you a conditional offer typically. So you have to meet certain grades. So you actually have to try and get those grades when you take the exam. So yeah. Wow, that's so complex. Like, I feel like if that's the equivalent of how I got into my university, I feel so like, I feel like I had it so easy because all I had to do was submit my high school scores and that's it. And then. To get into the UK university, you need to do another test and an interview. Oh my god! I yeah, I think imagine. this is especially yeah for medicine though. Um, usually for like other courses, um, it's just enough to put like a submit a personal statement and like your grade. But yeah. So yeah, that's still yeah. so like wow. The viewers really need to step up their games if they want to get into UK university. So. Um, how about in general? Uh, what if, like I said before, if the viewers want to study, for example, in Imperial College London, how yep. many ways are there actually? Um, how many ways? Um, I'd say um, there's not like one specific way. Um, I think it's just to be. Uh, I think 
the most important thing is to be hard working i guess because it's, it's a lot of things you have to do right so um you have to consistently just work hard and like persevere through all those things so i i guess yeah that's the main thing i'd like to say oh, wow. it's also very time consuming as well so yeah I can imagine that that will require so much time and effort. Like, yeah, I really had it easy. Like, I really do. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you didn't, but yeah. <laughs> um, let's get to our next topic. So, about the first time we get into a medical faculty, uh, having to adapt through very harsh changes from high school to university in Indonesia is a very common thing to experience. For me personally, I've been a very lazy person since high school, literally the polar opposite of diligence. But sadly, I'm still lazy, so that barely changed. However, what I did experience regarding to adaptation is that I'm now so much more sociable and confident in myself. Because as you know, as doctors, we need to be sociable and confident because we'll be facing people all the time. Literally, every little bit of our work will be about humans, about people. So uh, what was your transition like from high school to university? Or in contrary, your high school is already so competitive that it barely changes in university. Um, okay, so when it came to my transition into university, I think it was pretty tough. Um, not only because it's going from high school to university, but also because I was going from Malaysia to London. And um, I was also at the same school since like kindergarten. So for me, like uh, while I was in Malaysia, I didn't really have to like make new friends and just like, because I always had, you know, the same group of friends. Um, So going into university was quite tough because I had to learn to be more, uh, I guess, sociable uh, and like um, just be comfortable in this very uh, unfamiliar environment. So there was that. Um, there were a lot of like, um, I guess, I had a lot of culture shock as well with the difference in uh, the UK culture, um, whether it came to, for instance, like drinking um, versus the culture that was there in Malaysia. So. Uh, definitely uh, had a had a lot of culture shock uh, when I first came. Um, in terms of the education aspect, uh, there's definitely a big jump when it comes to uh, the stuff you have to know in university. Like, uh, I think the best example is like in biology class in high school, you only have to learn like a few steps when it comes to like like two three steps when it comes to like glycolysis or you know all these different like um, important biochemical like uh, reactions but um, in like the first few weeks of our uh, class in high school uh, in university we had to like memorize all these like 10 different steps with like uh, different products reactants and like enzymes and all those things so definitely a huge jump um, I think in high school I was able to sort of memorize everything like for instance in biology I'd be able to memorize the whole like um, content whereas in like university you can't do that so it's just about like I guess breadth rather than depth so trying to like know a bit of everything rather than like being able to memorize the whole thing yeah yeah that that's definitely really tough I can't I can't imagine how is it like to be to be so comfortable in where you were before, right? With the same, same yeah. group of people, and then you have to go through a whole other country full of a whole other culture. And on top of that, you're going to a medical faculty, right? Like you just say, yeah. uh, I can definitely relate how I was able to memorize everything in high school, and then in university, it's just like. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna memorize this. <laughs> Things yeah. like that. Yeah. As expected to be a medical student, not even not even doctors yet. Just to be a medical student is just as difficult. It is so difficult, and it is as difficult as it is even in different parts of the world. Yeah. So now that you've become a medical student, it's time to move on from history to present. Just like what I've said before, I'm a, I'm a first year student, which is why I'm very 
uh, interested in your daily routine as a second year MBBS student, if you don't mind. So okay. related to medical education, uh, can you tell us about your schedule? So uh, in our university, we study from Monday to uh, Thursday, supposedly, even though there were so many instances where we study in the weekends at night, etc., to sit our doctors, like our doctor lectures activities. We study the theory on Monday and Thursday, and in between, we train our practical or our lab skills. So, what about you? Uh, okay, so I'll talk about I guess first year and second year because um, so generally for first year and second year, um, every two weeks we have anatomy and clinical skills. So that's where we go into uh, the dissect the, the dissection room and we have our cadavers. Uh, protected for us um, and we just go through the different cadavers and learn um, I guess anatomy and then right after that we have uh, our clinical skill ses sessions where we practice on one another for our like examination um, so that's every two weeks um, and I guess just from Monday to Friday it generally consists of lectures and tutorials uh, so the lectures will be on so for instance, in first year, we had our bi biochemical module, uh, bi biochemistry module, as well as our systems module. So we would have uh, lectures and tutorials on those. Currently in second year, we only really have our systems module. So um, from Monday to Friday, um, we'll have uh, lectures and tutorials. I think this year we had a lot more tutorials. Um, but yeah, and we, we also have other different modules. Um, they're not as big as our like systems module, but we'll have a few like sessions, uh, like for instance, professional values and behaviors is one of our modules. Um, so we'll also have a few lectures or talks on those, uh, I guess like once in a while as well. And we also have a addition. So, you know how I said every two weeks we have um, anatomy and placements. So it'll alternate with clinical, uh, it'll alternate with placements. So one week we'll have anatomy, the next week we'll have placements. So the placements will be at, uh, so GP, so we had GP placements. And then I think this year we had uh, two, we had two weeks of hospital placements. So where we just stop our lectures and we go into hospital for uh, two weeks and uh, yeah, do some assessments there as well. Oh, wow, that sounds so fun <laughs> compared yeah. to what I go through. <laughs> because I feel oh, like right. life is just, well, just lectures and tutorials. Right, so I guess that's the advantage with um, like Imperial. They really stress that we get uh, clinical exposure, like even from year one. Um, so, yeah. That's true, because uh, even though, like, for me in our university, of course we do labs and stuff, right? But Mm -hmm. I can't imagine going through to the hospitals and the clinics in year one. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah that's so extreme. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. So about exams. So in Indonesia, we do our exams online right now because of the pandemic, right? With and then we have this whole like rules and mechanisms that we have. Uh, first of all, we need to have mirrors that have to be like 100 centimeter uh, wide and 80 centimeter high that has to be placed in front of our face and then we have oh, to join wow. a Zoom meeting through another device that has to be placed 45 degrees behind us. <laughs> it's so bothersome but we have to bear with it because obviously it is good to like prevent cheating and stuff because because that happens it, it, it does happen yeah. yeah so using that mechanism we have post post test F, uh, once every week and then a block exam at the end of the block which is once in five weeks of studying so how do you do your exams okay so likewise because of the pandemic we're doing online exams but um, we're not as strict as you guys so um, it's just like taking like a regular online test but the thing is the uni has changed the question style so 
it's no longer like a like a like normally for exams they'll ask a lot of Greek call questions where you have to sort of think of what you've memorized right but obviously they'll be easy with a open book exam so what they've done is they've changed the question so that it's quite hard to google so they're more they're, they're questions that test your application so uh that's why they don't make it as strict um so we have those we have those exams and um those exams come after easter so uh, we're currently on easter holiday right now it's about a month holiday uh and my first exam is on the 26th of april um so yeah i'll have i'll have four exams um big ones like one will be my systems exam one will be my anatomy exam um another will be like a for another module called lifestyle uh, medicine and prevention and then we also have a in person exam as well um for our clinical uh skill so we call it the clinical practical assessment i guess it's kind of like the uh ospi is the ospi i think yeah Uh, just a miniature version but that can't really be done online so we have to go in person for that for that um so we have a few like major exams after easter holiday throughout the year we have like um we have really small like quizzes i guess um some are formative just for us to kind of keep up with the uh lectures and stuff like that whereas uh, we also have some uh summative small like quizzes as well that are quite case based but yeah those are our assessments wow yeah that's that's a good way to to like alter uh, as an alternative um to prevent cheating i guess yeah i think i i would prefer that than having to do to go through all this mechanism but it's okay yeah <laughs> so yeah uh on to our next topic uh, personally do you take additional courses to help you study medicine or like tutor or some stuff outside of the uh, university right so uh, in the uk there are um, a lot of societies that offer extra tutorials um, so i do attend those uh, for instance i'm part of amsa also has academic tutorials once in a while so I'll have I'll send those and um they're essentially kind of similar to the tutorials we have uh in school. It's, they're just run by other students. Um and sometimes they can be a lot more helpful as well because they just point out like the important bits we need to know for exam. Um just recently as well, um I did a tutorial for I I did uh tutorials for my clinical practical assessment every week. uh with um a few of my Korean seniors um and I found that pretty helpful but yeah so I'd say the tutor I'd say most medical students we um extra course wise we generally just attend tutorials provided by society yeah uh, yeah that's that's also uh, what uh people usually take here to just mm, okay a small tutors <laughs> Right. in like in groups in like AMSA too yeah we also have this year yeah they are they are really helpful okay next uh are on to our next topic uh so if i want to be a doctor which of course i do <laughs> there are phases that i have to go through right so in yeah. indonesia we divide it into three phases So the first is uh, preclinical where we get the title of a uh, bachelor of medicine. So only after uh, about three years, I guess, we actually already got the bachelor of medicine title. And then uh, there's the clinical phase where we assist doctors under supervision and then internship. And then we can actually be actual doctors that can practice. So how about you? What what about your education plans and what do you personally want to achieve as a doctor? Oh, okay. Um so I'll talk about like the general route here in the UK first. So um we have medical school, so that's five years or six years and then we get our MBBS degree. And then once we do that, we'll um have our foundation year. So that's just two years of uh foundation training within like different specialties. Um once we complete those two years we'll be fully registered with the GMC 
uh, with the, it's called the General Medical Council, I believe. So they'll actually be like legit doctors, I guess, after those two years. Um, technically, we'll be working as junior doctors um, those years, but we'll actually be we'll be able to get uh, get our medical license after those two years of foundation training. Once those two years of foundation training are done, um, we go into specialty training. So that can be as little as three years if you want to be a GP, but it can go up to six or six to eight or nine years if you want to specialize in other specialties. So it's pretty long. Um, yeah, so as for me, my current plan is to finish medical school here, um, do two years of my, uh, do two years of foundation training so I can get my uh, UK medical license and then potentially go to Korea uh, and maybe specialize there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I also want to Korea. <laughs> I also want to go to Korea to <laughs> specialize. Oh, okay. That's but cool. it's actually purely because I'm, I love Korea. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we we both surely have a long way ahead of us, don't we? Yeah. But let's not think about that too much because that'll just bring us down, I guess, if we think about it too much. But I'm sure we can do it together. <laughs> which brings us to our last topic, which is about releasing our stress. So especially in the medical faculty, this is a topic that is frequently discussed about because it's just bound to bound us, knowing how hard it, it has been and that we still have to go through uh, this difficult path for so many years to come, let alone venturing off on our own as doctors. Anyway, what I want to ask is, Firstly, how busy do you consider yourself to be? So, like, personally, I have so many activities here and there in, in organizations at our medical faculty, like AMSA, and like this activity right now, and many more. So, yeah. what about your non-academic activities? Right, so, um, I think I consider myself to be busy because I like being busy. Um, so other than uh, like medical school, I quite like sports. Um, so whether it's like football, basketball, um, uh, boxing, golf, or like just working out at the gym. Uh, yeah, I like I like to play a variety of sports. Um, so I, I usually play sports to not only like socialize with others, um, but also to uh, as a means to de-stress. So sports is definitely one thing I do. Um, other societies like um, AMSA, like I'm the AMSA AMSEP officer. Um, there's also KUMA, which is the Korean UK Medical Association for Students. So it's a society where we have Korean UK medical students, and we um, have events with Korean UK medical, like UK doctors as well. So it's, it's really good for networking. So um, I'm the secretary for that. Um, and so there's some societies, uh, and I think just uh, recently as well, um, I I've developed a uh, interest in investing. So I I like um, looking at the markets and uh, just, yeah, those things I'd say. Yeah, I just we're all just pretty busy here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so UK UK is a rather diverse country with people from all corners of the world, right? Especially since you went through your educations in uh, different countries. Is there anything you'd like to share with us regarding how different people are and the way uh, they live, perhaps? Especially people that you've met through organizations like AMSA, or do you feel like uh, the diversity is nothing to be pointed out because because you've been in several parts of the world, that the diversity feels like it's it's nothing special. That it's just it's just diversity, maybe. Um. Right. So I mean, the UK is a very diverse place. Um. So, but I think um, and especially in university as well. Um, with me like participating in societies like AMSA, where uh, people are like Asian. Um. I definitely get a very diverse experience here in the UK, but I'd say I think the culture here is, is um, 
I, I guess you could say it's a lot more like relaxed. Um, maybe like um, like it's not as very like it's not as uptight. I guess. Yeah. Other than that, um, yeah, I don't really. UK is a very diverse place. So like um, food wise, as well as language wise, and like um, yeah, just like overall um, ethnicity wise, it's quite diverse. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really cool. That's definitely the like attractive point about UK that makes me want to go to UK. <laughs> so yeah, so on to our next topic uh, mm. about entertainment. So All right. uh, you say you enjoyed sports, right? But perhaps yeah. as in sports, what do you personally like listen to or uh, watch in your free time? Yeah, so uh, I also, I think I forgot to mention, I also like listening to music uh, as well as watching uh, uh, Netflix and just like, for instance, like K-dramas, I really like watching K-dramas, um, just Korean songs as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I also really love K-pop and Korean dramas. I, they actually make me like dancing too, and I also did some... Oh, okay. That's pretty yeah, cool. Do you, do you have do you have any um, favorites in particular, like K drama? Oh or yeah, or like sure. Just... Well, okay, especially so in K pop. Yeah. So my what, favorite like, what group kind? is, I would say right now, Mama Moo. Oh uh, okay. I mean, I, I don't really know too much about um, like different groups. I I only really know like the I guess the really really popular ones like BTS, like Pink. And whatnot, but yeah. And for me, K-pop was also quite like listening to like ballads or OSTs rather than like groups and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, I also really like K-pop, uh, like Korean ballads and OSTs. They they usually reach the peak of the charts, right? In Korea, I think Korean people in general uh, also like we really like ballad sense and yeah, it's this right. Yeah, especially so like there's a big culture of um, like relieving your stress at the uh, we call it the Norebang. Uh I think it literally means music room, but um, where people just go there and like sing to relieve stress. And um, a lot of people like to sing ballads when they go. So yeah. Oh yeah, I think that that's why ballads is always yeah. like on the peak of the charts in Korea. <laughs> so lastly. What is your, what is your opinion on the medical education system right now? Is there anything you wish would change for the better? Uh, medical education. Well, um, I mean, first of all, it's quite expensive. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, I think it'd be great if they could cut the cost like um, down. But otherwise, um, I'm actually quite liking the uh, diversity in terms of like. Uh, the education I'm receiving at the moment um, and I think that really helps when it comes to um, trying to get through a very long course definitely having um, like diversity and uh, I guess staying interested in what you're studying especially if you're studying it for so long is a key um, sort of an important thing um, yeah I, I don't really have much else to say yeah, I guess it's just yeah it's just expensive you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is indeed very expensive <laughs> okay well that was the last question sadly <laughs> thank you so much for willing to spend your time with me to share your stories and to enlighten the viewers curiosity about international medical education and for uh yeah, so for everyone who are still curious about medical education in UK, uh, special tips and all about living in UK, maybe you can contact Jeyong in his Instagram account that will be tagged below. Okay, that's it for this episode of me, uh, Medical Education Exclusive Talks. Leave a like if you are enlightened and share with us what you think of this episode through the comment section below. Have a nice day. Bye, Jill. Bye.